Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dr. Akif Beg. Today we'll be talking about ECG changes in pulmonary hypertension. So before going to the actual topic, we should know what happens in pulmonary hypertension and why do you expect some ECG changes in it. So see, basically pulmonary hypertension is the increase in mean pulmonary arterial pressure of more than 25. So pulmonary artery normally arises from which part of the heart? That is from the right ventricle. So from the right ventricle, the pulmonary artery arises. From this part, the pulmonary artery arises. If the pulmonary artery pressures are high or the pulmonary, pulmonary artery vessels resistance is high, what will happen? There will, be, there will be the backflow of blood. There will be backflow of blood. Because right ventricle has to do more uh, work to pump blood to the uh, pulmonary artery, but the, if the resistance is more, there will be backflow and thus leading to increased load in the left right ventricle and then directly into the right atrium. So this right ventricle and right atrium initially adapt to that increase in pressure by enlarging in size. And after that, if the enlargement is to their maximum capacity, the blood starts leaking back into the inferior vena cava, that is superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. So why do you expect a ECG changes in uh, permanent hypertension is basically because of the enlargement of the right atrium and the right ventricle. So ECG may not exclude it because many a time permanent hypertension patient will have a normal ECG. And abnormal ECG is more likely in uh, severe. So in only in severe pH, you may expect there could be a changes of uh, ECG. So what are the ECG abnormalities which may suggest uh, pulmonary hypertension is actually they will not suggest pulmonary hypertension as such. They will suggest the changes in the right atrium and right ventricle enlargement. So if there is a right atrium enlargement, what do you see is P pulmonary. So if you want to know more in detail of P pulmonary, we have already discussed in our video on P waves. You can go through that. Uh, we'll be discussing also here also in brief. And then you can see a right axis deviation because the right side of the heart is getting enlarged. You expect a right axis deviation. Then you can see his right ventricle hypertrophy, as I've already said, because of the back pressure from the pulmonary artery, the blood accumulates, keep accumulating in right ventricle and thus leading to right ventricle hypertrophy. And this hypertrophy, if it continues, then it may stretch the myocardium to a level that it may go into a strain. It's called as RV strain. And then that is right bundle branch problem. So in short, ECG criteria of right atrial enlargement. Right atrial enlargement, we have already said, because... Uh, right atrium there is SA node. SA node is present in the right atrium. So first part of the heart to contract or depolarize is the right atrium. So whenever there is right atrial enlargement what will happen is that the right atrium will keep enlarging enlarging and the second half is the left atrium. So a contraction of the right atrium will go and fall on the left atrium and that's why it appears to be a peak form. You can see here the P waves here is more than two and a half small square. There is more than 2.5 millimeters or if it is more than 1.5 mm in V1, V2. Here also you can see if more than 1.5 means more than one and a half small squares in V1 and V2. That also suggests right atrial enlargement and this is called as P pulmonary. Then right ventricle hypertrophy and strain button. So among the chest leads, the only lead which is on the right side of the heart is the V1. So what does R wave include? R wave uh, is symbolizes nothing but the ventricular contractions. So in V1, uh, there will be dominant R wave because the right side of the heart is very much enlarged. So R wave will appear very much dominant. So usually in V1, R wave is not much dominant. It is S is more dominant than the R wave. So if there is a dominant R wave in V1, that is R more than S in V1 or in V6, which is the lateral leads, there S will be more than that is R by S ratio is less than 1. Or S wave if it is more than 7 mm deep. So normally in V6, V5, V6, you do not expect uh, any S wave. So if there is dominant R wave in V1 or dominant S wave in V6, along with that, there is something called a strain pattern. Strain pattern is nothing but the hypertrophy changes along with that if you see a STT depressions. So you can see here in V1, the enlargement of, so normally, this one, normally in normal ECG, always R is lesser than the S. So that in V1, you can normally see that there is deep S1, deep S1 compared to V1. Whereas when you go to V6, normally this S wave you cannot see, it keeps disappearing uh, as we go laterally and V5 is dominant. But here, what happens is that the S is, is more dominant than the R in lateral leads, it is in the V6. And here R wave is more dominant, that is suggestive of right ventricular hypertrophy. And if you see along with that, uh, ST depressions with T inversion, it is called as RV strain. So this RV strain is more specific for uh, 
uh, or more specific or more sensitive for identical hypertrophy. And later on, uh, if the severity is very much long, like severity of permanent hypertension is very much high, what will happen is the right ventricle will enlarge a lot. So if there is more enlargement of the right ventricle, the whole ventricle will take more time to contract. So what does the ventricular contraction symbolizes in ECG is the QRS wave. So if there is a QRS wave, that means that is ventricular depolarization. So if your right ventricle is severely enlarged, the, Q, the ventricle may take longer time to depolarize completely and that's why there could be prolongation of the QRS complex and then QT prolongation as well. So in pulmonary hypertension, we can expect arrhythmias as well. The most common arrhythmias being the atrial arrhythmias. Why it happens is also is that because there is right atrium and right ventricular enlargement. So when there is right atrial enlargement, so right atrium uh, is a less compliant than right ventricle. The right ventricle atrium is uh, tend to get stretched easily and may form some ectopic foci, which may lead to atrial flutter or atrial fibrillation. So normal incidence of this arrhythmias is 25%, occurs in 25% of patients after five years of age. So hope you have liked my video. If you have any doubts on this topic, do let me know in my comment box. If you want me to tell any other topic or any other uh, thing which you are interested in, do let me know. And uh, do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Akib Beck, for more interesting videos. Thank you.